Well, good morning, everyone. How are we all this morning? It is October the 17th. Um, it is great to be with you. My name is Pastor Brett. If you have not met me previously, um, I want to just welcome you this morning to Life Impact Church, wherever you may be tuning in. There will be some of us tuning in in multiple locations in Mackay. There is potentially uh, Anthony. You are, uh, you know, welcome to you today, Anthony. Um, you know, g'day to you and your family um, over in New Zealand. And quite potentially, there might be some others that are uh, uh, linking in, tuning into us from all over the world, potentially. Um, and it is my privilege and my excitement this morning to bring the Word of God to you. This month at Life Impact Church in Mackay, we are preaching about our Father. So the whole theme this month is focused on our Father, not my Father, not your Father, but our Father. So the Holy Spirit is just working uh, in our, our worlds at the moment, in, our, in our, our hearts, just reminding us who we are, who He calls us, what He names us. He is our Father. And um, I, I said a couple of weeks ago, as I started out this message, that one of the first things a father does for a child is name them. And so this month, we are focusing on some of the things that our father calls us, his view of us, his names for us. And so today, I wish to start off in Psalm 139. So while, you were, while you're heading across to Psalm 139, I just want to honor Pastor Yibin and thank him for a um, great message again last week. Um, you know, God is in a good mood. You know, um, there, there are some really powerful statements that Pastor Yibin made around, you know, our father and how Jesus introduced our father, uh, his father, our father to us as Abba Father. Uh, you know, so we're in this space, we're in this this, this realm um, that he's, he wants to be known as Abba Father. He wants to be known as Daddy God. Daddy, Father, and uh, and it's interesting that Jesus introduced him as that. Um, you know, we know in the beginning, Pastor Yibin talked about Elohim and, and Yahweh and the names that God gave Himself. And here we find right now in the age of the church, um, you and I, born for a time such as this, our Father is reminding us of His name that He is Abba Father. And as we understand who Father is, we can we can we can gather a whole new understanding um, about His view and His name. His names for us. Uh, and so that's one of the main things that we're talking about this month is um, the importance of how our Father views us, the importance of how our Father frames us. Because as we understand how Father God views us, Abba Father, our Father views us, we can we can gain a, a, a right perspective, a right understanding of, uh, of who we are, our identity. So as He views us, we should view us. Um, and out of our view of us, we actually view the Father. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, how James and John wanted to call down fire on the Samaritans. And, and so their view of God, um, uh, you know, formed this, this view of others and, and this view of themselves. And Jesus said, come on now, I want to change your view. I want you to see me as a saver. And I want you to see these people, the Samaritan people, as worthy of being saved. So today... I want to preach out of Psalm 139. And we're going to pick up a few key points and a few key messages there uh, that the Father wants to speak to us and communicate to us today. Let's pray before I get into it. Father God, I thank you that you are our Father. I thank you, Jesus, when you communicated to your disciples uh, about prayer and the manner in which we should pray. You introduced prayer um, as prescribed by Jesus himself that we address our Father our Father, our Father, Abba Father, our Father is the one in whom we pray to. So today, our Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your life. And uh, it is my privilege today, Lord God, to to uh, to speak your word. And so I pray today that you would you would speak wisdom. You'd speak the oracles and the life of God through me. And today, Lord God, I pray that we would move according to your view of us. And Lord God, any view of us that needs to be modified and changed, Father God, we give our heart to you to change our view. Lord, any view of you that you wish to change or modify, Father God, we give you the power right now to change. We give you the, uh, the freedom right now according to your power to change your view that we see um, you as, Lord God. So we ask you today, Father God, to shift and change our frame and to shift and change our view of you, Lord God so that we can be framed and move according to your plan and purpose for our life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm just going to turn this phone on silent because I forgot you have heard a text message happening right there. Let's 
go. So you are already at Psalm 139. Uh, let's read it. It's Psalm 139, and I want to pick it up from verse 13 through to verse 16. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. Hallelujah. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Did you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Have you understood that about yourself? Can you see yourself as being wonderfully and marvelously made according to God's view of you? Right. So here the scriptures are teaching us um, that that in our mother's womb, that sacred place, Father God formed and put you together. He oversaw you. He covered you. He planned for you. He had ideas around you. We're going to read on a little bit further. We're going to see that he even has a book written about you, about your days. So let's move on. Uh, in, in verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Do you know that you are God's handiwork, that you have been skillfully wrought, skillfully put together, skillfully thought of, fearfully, wonderfully, marvelously, skillfully connected and put together? Maybe you've got a wrong view about you. You know, maybe you think that you aren't skillfully put together, that you aren't marvelous, that you aren't worthy, that you aren't, that you aren't put together by God's purpose and God's plan because you may have accepted, you may have embraced some other's name for you, some other's view of you. Well, today the Holy Spirit is moving according to his power to shift and change your view because he has an idea about your frame. He wants to frame you. Let's look at Psalm uh, verse 15 there again in Psalm 139. My frame was not hidden. Here the psalmist understands that his frame was not hidden, but connected to God's skill, God's marvelous wonder and fearful work uh, about his life. Made in secret, not hidden, skillfully wrought. Verse 16, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. <laughs> and in your book, they all were written. You have God has a book. It's his book. Right. And uh, and and there's something written about you. Let's read on uh, the days fashioned for me when I was when there were yet none of them. Right. Let's just read that again. And in your book, they were all written the days fashioned for me. You know, God has a book and he's written some notes about your days. He's written some notes about you. He has a view about you. He has some things to say about you. Uh, he, has, he, he has a view of you that he wants you to understand and know. Because when we, when we see and when we move according to God's view, we, we can move according to purpose. You know, our father must name us because our name drives our worth and our values, Right? And we start to have to live up to the name. We start to have to live up to the view that God has of you, right? And, and what's, what potentially has been happening in our lives when we, when we believe or move according to someone else's view or according to a trauma's view or something that's been said of you by someone else, we start to live up to it. There's this, there's this essence and this, this power in a view. There's this essence and this power in a name. And this is why this scripture is so important today because your frame, Let's look at it again. My frame was not hidden. God sees you. You're never out of his sight. You're never out of his view. His eyes, his eyes saw your substance when you were yet unformed. His eyes saw, so here, this frame, he's got this idea, he's got this view, and he's got a book, and he's written some things about your life. He's written some things about you. But maybe your life hasn't lined up with the things he's written. But today, I, I want to encourage you that the Spirit of God is going to move on us. He's going to move on us all. He's going to shift and he's going to change some things in our heart as we and give us the power and the understanding to accept and embrace that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, skillfully wrought, marvelous. He looks at us and he goes, marvelous. Oh, you're marvelous. Can I say to you this morning, some of you don't think you're marvelous, but the Lord and the word of God is saying to you this morning, you are marvelous. You are marvelous. You've been thinking that you're not. You've accepted someone else's view of you, but the view of your creator, the view of Elohim, Yahweh, Abba, Father, is that you are marvelous. <laughs> you are marvelous, skillfully and amazingly wrought and put together. You see, our father's names and our father's view of us is pivotal. You see, he names us and he puts his name on us. 
You know, he's, he's so happy with you. He's so pleased with you that, that, that he's, he's happy to be one with you, that he's happy for you to bear his image. You are an image bearer. He's so pleased with you. He, he, thinks you're so, he thinks you're marvelous. And the reason why he thinks you're marvelous is because you have been made in his image. You're an image bearer, and he has a pretty good view of himself. Our father has a perfect view of who he is. He has a perfect understanding of his, of his name, of his power, of his greatness. And so he's able to form, he's formed us in his image. So he can call you marvelous because you're his image bearer. You've been made in his image and his likeness. You might have noticed this morning that I'm standing up. I'm standing behind the pulpit. I have brought the pulpit home. Thank you, darling, for this great idea, because I'm telling you, I feel liberated. I feel excited. I feel like there's, there's a different dimension to the way that I'm preaching just because I'm standing. Hallelujah. Rather than sitting and looking at notes. And I, I don't know, there's this you know, Pastor Yibben said to me the other day that, that, that he's concerned. I mentioned him about the pulpit. He said, oh, Pastor Brett, you're going to just dive out of you. And he's absolutely right. I'm just going to jump out of you. And here I am back again. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to work on staying in view because it's important because we're talking about views. <laughs> I'm going to work on staying in the frame. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Because it's important that we stay in the Father's view that we stick to the frame and that he, he is working according to the frame, according to the frame he oversaw in your mother's womb, that sacred place. He formed and knit you together and wrote some notes about you. He wrote some notes about you. Our father is not dismantling us, but building us. Understanding how our father views us is critical to how we view ourselves. Hallelujah. Our Father must name us to frame us, to frame our view of our Father, which allows us, right, to frame our view of ourselves. So when we when we look at this scripture and we see that God is calling us marvelous, He is there as a reflection as image bearers. That so is He. So as we view the Father as a marvelous, skillful Creator, then we can then accept that view. We can live within the frame, not out of the frame. But in the frame of his view, right? Not, not out of view, but in his view, right, God? Right? As we understand who he is, we can grasp a hold of who we are and we can live out of the power. We can live up to it, right? You've been called some things and you've been living up to it. You know, maybe your dad or your mom or your aunt or your uncle or a teacher or a principal or someone called you something that was out of frame. That was not in the Father's view, and you've been living up to it. Well, I'm going to encourage you today that the Lord has framed your life. He has written some notes about you, and he wants you to live up to it. He wants you to live in his view. You are not out of his sight. His eyes are upon you, and he's thinking good things about you. He's in a good mood today. He's thinking good things about you. And how do we know that? Well, let's just have a look at Genesis 1. Let's go to Genesis 1. And go right back to the start so we can connect into what the Father's thinking about you. We know before you were made, he's saying you're marvelous. And he can say that. We know the word can say that because God has an, had an intention. He had an idea, he had a view. He had some things he saw about mankind right at the start before, before Adam and Eve slipped, jumped out of frame. You see, you are in our Father's full view. You're not hidden, right? You're not hidden. Shame hides you, but our Father's love for you keeps you always in his full view. Because he loves you so intently and so deeply, you are always in his full view. Let's have a look at Genesis 1. You see, he is pleased with you, even though you may not be. He's pleased with you, even though you're not. And he wants to change that idea that we have about ourselves. Genesis 1, are you there yet? It's right at the start of the book. If you're new to the Bible, uh, Genesis 1 is the first book of the Bible, um, or Genesis is the first book, and Genesis chapter 1 is the first chapter of the first book. And here I am. There's about 15 pages uh, in my Bible ahead of Genesis 1, which is why you can hear pages turning. But I just want to start uh, in Genesis 1, verse 20. He's pleased with you even though you may not be. Genesis 1, 
verse 20. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. And let the birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures. You see, he let this word out. He let this intention. He declared what he was going to do. He spoke it, let it. And then we find in verse 21, and so there was a create, there was a creature, right? So God said, let it be. He spoke it into being. There's going to be an abundance of life in the waters, in the oceans. And then verse 21 says, and there were then creatures, great creatures. You see what God frames and what he views and what he says, there's power in that word, right? There's power in that word. So the word has the power for, for what's spoken about to live up to it to come to life from it. So what God speaks about you, you don't have to strive for it. You just have to live up to it. You can just live into it, right? Now, living up to it uh, applies a bit of pressure to it. But let me say to you, because he spoke it, the pressure's on what's been spoken. The pressure's on who spoke it, right? Not on you living up to it. Because you're going to live out of and live into and live up to what was spoken about you. All the pressure is on the word. All the pressure is on the one who spoke it, right? You know this is true because here in verse 20, God spoke, let the waters be full of life, right? The pressure is on God. He spoke it. He spoke it, let the waters be full of life. And then verse 21 says, and then suddenly, and then there was great creatures. The pressure was not on the creatures, but on the creator. You see, the pressure is not on the creature, but on the creator. So what God speaks about you, there's no pressure on you to live up to it. You just get to enjoy the life of living into it, living by it and living up to it because all the pressure is on the creator. Let's keep reading. So God created great sea creatures and there they were living in the water. They were moving about with which the waters abounded according to their kind. There was no pressure on them to come up with kinds. The pressure for each creature and each kind was in the word. It was in the creator and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying, right? So he spoke it and then there was this response to the word and there was the creature. And then there's another word spoken for the creature to live by, right? So the creature comes alive. Great sea creatures have come alive. Now, God is going to say something powerful to each creature. He's going to speak over them. He says, and the Lord blessed them, saying, you see, when the Lord speaks, there's a blessing. When the Lord's intentions and views are framed, uh, as we just read in Psalm 139, there's a blessing, right? So here God's speaking his blessing. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let the birds multiply on the earth. And so the evening and the morning were the fifth day. This spoken word, now be fruitful and multiply. Now the pressure on each creature to fill that water, to fill the ocean was not on themselves, but they were going to live into, live up to, live out of the blessing of God's frame, what God spoke over them. Now you go and you be fruitful and you multiply. And guess what the creatures of the sea do? They filled it. Now we've caught a bunch and we pulled a bunch out of it, but the waters are still streaming. They are still screaming with life because of God's spoken word. Hallelujah. Verse 24, then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping things on the, uh, on the, uh, and the beasts of the earth according to its kind. And so it was, <laughs> and so it was. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So there's some good things going on here. Then God said in verse 26, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. You see, you're called marvelous because you are the image bearer of the creator. <laughs> you, you can be called. But it's okay. You can accept it. You can accept it because you understand something about God. You know that he's wonderful. You know that he's marvelous. You know that, that just in hearing these verses, that there is skill that's taken place to speak and create all the amazing living things that you see. So when you look in the mirror, you can agree and accept that you've been marvelously made and that he has some pretty cool things written in a book about you. 
our likeness and our image, he says here. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. He said, let us do it. He spoke a few things and then there's life. He forms us out. He comes there and he speaks and then what his intentions are, what his view is, what his frame is. It's here, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, listen to this. This is what God said to us in the beginning. This is what he spoke over mankind. This is what he spoke over you. And this is what he personalized when he was forming you in your mother's womb, that sacred place, your space, your place that God went to work, pulling forward into the future what he saw right back then as the psalmist wrote. And he began to go to work skillfully and, and he wrought you, put you together. And marvelous was his works. This is his blessing. This is what he said. He said, now be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on it. And God said, see, 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 I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed so that you shall be there, so that you shall have food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And so it was, and it was so, and so it was, and it was so. Then verse 31, then God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. And so the evening and the morning were the sixth day. You see, it was good. It was very good. God has spoken his word. He has an idea and he has a view. And we've been redeemed back to it through Jesus Christ. We have the redeeming power. We've been purchased back for God's original intention and his original plan. You see, God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. He is saying to us today, be fruitful and multiply according to my view, according to my idea, and according to, according to how I have framed you. So a name or God's view that he says about you forms part of the power, right? Forms part of the power to live up to it. So because he's called you good and very good, the very word itself is the power for you to live up to. His good view of you and understanding who he is so that we can live out of that view. When we accept a name, we can now move according to its purpose. When we accept a name, we can move according to its purpose. When we accept a name, we can move according to its view, how it frames you. When I was uh, in school, um, I was I was school captain uh, of my primary school, and I was school captain of my high school. I was I was elected captain by my peers and by the teachers and by the principal. I was also elected captain in in all of my junior sporting teams. There was this common theme that was happening in and around my life. People saw me; they called me captain. Now, according to the view and according to that name, I had this power. I understood this purpose and I could operate according to the purpose of the name because I accepted it and I understood it. So the very name itself caused me to move in its power, in its passion, in its purpose. So I would captain. I would flip the coin before the game started. I would decide some things. I would make speeches at assembly. I would have to make speeches. I would go on behalf of the school to Anzac Day parades and, and, and all those things. I would represent the school. And you know why I did it? Because of the name that was attached to me. You see, the years that I wasn't captain... I never did those things that the captain did because the name moved me in its purpose. The name gave me the power to do it. Do you see what I'm saying? In the name, the name itself holds the primary, holds the power, holds part of the power and the, the, the capacity to live up to it, to live out of it. And so it is with all the names and all the things that God calls us. But also some of the names that the enemy might call us. You might remember that Adam and Eve moved through the garden and God came walking and they were hiding. They said, we're naked. God said, who called you that? Who gave you? Where did you hear? Who told you that you? Who? Where did you? Hey, 
I never wrote that about. That's not in my book of notes for you. Where did you receive? How did you see that name? There was this shame, right? And it carried a name and it gave a purpose. And that shame came, named them. And they moved according to the power that they hid from God. You see, there are some names that God is wanting to obliterate off our lives today. Names that we've accepted. Names that we've understood. Names that we've received. Names that we've embraced about ourselves. And the moment you embrace a name, you give it, you give it its purpose. You, you, you allow the power of that name to move you and, and cause you to live up to it, cause you to live out of it, and cause you to live into it. If you don't think it's true, we're going to look at a couple of passages of Scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, where there were some children of people of God who understood their name and they were able to live up to it and live into it based on embracing a name. So this morning, maybe you've embraced a name. You see, (laughs) what God wants to do is frame you, right? Not shame you. God is a framer. He's not a shamer. So when Adam and Eve were walking in the garden, it's like, who, who, who told you that? I that didn't come from my mouth. That's not my, I didn't think, of, I, that's not what I think about you. There's some names that need to be changed in our space. There's some views that God wants to shift and change because he is our father. And when he shifts my view of how the father sees me, then I can move in that view for you. You see, I can then be entrusted with the notes that God has about your life. So God is wanting to move. Our Father is wanting to move in our space where we can accept and embrace who he sees us as, where we can see and we can receive that book of note, the book that he's written about our lives and about our days, some of the things he's written in there about us, all the scriptures that are written about us. There's a whole bunch of them that I might read at the end where we can embrace and we can see that. And and, and as I... As I embrace the book of life, as I embrace the the book of the life that God has for me to live and the names he's written and some of his views about me and how he's framed me. As I learn to embrace that, then I know there's a power, there's a witness there where I can learn to embrace yours. I can understand the book God has written about you and, and I can be entrusted with that book and I can hold that book and I can begin to stir in you. I can begin to speak life over you. Church, this is the power. This is what God wants us to do. This is, this is the, the source of our life to be witnesses. Right? Not to just to go around talking about God and getting people to believe in him, but to see and understand that we're made in his image, that we are image bearers. And that every single person we come in contact with with life is an image bearer and has a, has a notebook. God has a book written about all the things he had planned for their life that they might not be living up to. And, but we can embrace that. We can see that. We can move in that. And he can frame our view of those around about us. And you see, this is how a, a, a believer can be a witness and witness out of that love and life that God has for us and lead others into it. See, our culture is a dismantling culture. Uh, It's an opposing culture. Jesus uh, came and he said, my kingdom is not like this. When he he said to James and John, I'm not going to destroy those Samaritans. My culture, my kingdom is not about destruction. It's about saving lives. You see, he has to have that view, right? Because he understood who he was. He was Messiah. He had all these things spoken about him. He understood his names. He understood his view the father had of him. And he was able to live and move according to that view where he was able to stop in a moment and go, hang on a second. There's no destruction coming from me because I know my name. I know the father's view of me. And so therefore, his view of me allows me to view those Samaritans and view you as worthy being saved. And in fact, I'm going to go to a cross. He was able to say to his disciples and begin to teach them and speak to them about his life and the sacrifice that he would make because he understood the view the father had of him and his life was framed according to the names he was living by. Hallelujah. Are you getting this this morning? I pray the Holy Spirit is impacting your life, changing your view, stand moving and convicting what we've believed about ourselves that has not come from him. You see, our culture is a destroying culture. We're constantly confronted and bombarded by dismantling ideas and ideas of destruction because Satan saw an image bearers in the garden and he was mad. He was mad dirty because remember, he wanted, he wanted to be God. 
And so he came and he attacked the image of God. He was mad dirty. He was upset that mankind would have the image of God, would bear his image and be just like God in his image, in his likeness. The ironic thing is what where Satan tempted Adam and Eve, they already had what they went for. But Satan wanted, he went in and he said, you can be God, not just like him. You can be God. So that's why Satan, that's why this world in which he has authority and moves is such a destroying and conflicting culture. That's why Jesus came and he said, I've come, I've come to save men's lives. You see, first he knew, <laughs> he knew what our father's view of him was and he moved in it. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. If there's power and there's, there's life and death on this thing, there's life and death on the word. We've looked at it in Genesis already. You see, our father has named us. He is following his notes in his book. <laughs> he's moving according to what he's written about you. You see, when we accept a name, we can move according to its purpose and live out our days by it. I just said that about Captain. There was no team that I did that, that I that I did a preach that I speak um, that I did a speech on. There was no team that I flipped the coin on that I wasn't Captain. Because the captain carried the purpose, right? The cap and I, I wasn't concerned that any teams in my, when I was a bit older that I wasn't captain. I wasn't, I wasn't there yeah, hustling and bustling to flip the coin because I understood that the name carried the purpose, and carried this 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 power to perform it, right, and to live out of it. So I had no concern there. So there's there's a name, there's his view, what he speaks about you, what our father speaks about you is pivotal. You see, know your names. Our father uses for you and accept them. Know your names that our Father uses for you and accept them and move by their purpose. You see, when we do this, we empower his purpose. We have to know what he's written in the book. We have to know his thoughts. We have to know who he is. We have to know what he's talking about. We have to know who we are. And when we know what he's written, when we know the kind of notes that are in his book that he's written about our days, we will move according to the purpose of it. Because that's the power in a name. That's the power in a view. Remember, the pressure is on the creator. The pressure for a child of God to live by the plans that our father has for us is all on Abba Father. He's all on Abba Father. It's all on Daddy God. It's just all on him. Because he spoke it. He wrote it. And he's aiming us toward it. And then we get to live into it. We get to live out of it. We get to live up to it. Hallelujah. You see, when we accept and we move by their purpose, then we do this. We empower his purpose. When we accept it and embrace it, we can move in the purpose of it. Then we can be trusted with, right? And then there's this, when we accept it for ourselves, then when we can trust it with someone else's notes, <laughs> someone else's book written. You know, if God speaks and you agree, there's power for purpose. If God speaks and you agree, there's power for purpose. To build and to give you a hope and a life abundant. Be fruitful and multiply. You are very good and you are created marvelous in his sight, you image bearer. Hallelujah. You image bearer. If Satan speaks and you agree, there's power for destruction and shame. Let me say this again. If God speaks and you agree, there's power for purpose there. To build you and to give you a hope and a life abundant. If Satan speaks and you agree, there's power for destruction there and shame right there. Remember, God is not shaming you. He's framing you. Hallelujah. Remember, God asked who told Adam and Eve they were naked. Who said that? Who said that to you? Our God frames, not shames. He is a framer, not a shamer. Hallelujah. Hold up God's notes. Hold up that book, right? Get a hold of it. God, you've written a book about me. This, this day that I'm living today, you've, you've got some ideas about it. You wrote it before, before the foundation of the world, before I was formed. You wrote some ideas about me. Oh, God, lead me in that space. I want to live up to that. I want to accept it and embrace what you say about me, what your view of my day is, right? Hold up God's notes. He wrote and spoke about and over you. Accept them and move in them now according to his word and according to his power and according to his view. Amen. You see, Saul of Tarsus 
was who he was known as, as a Jew. But the moment he heard about God's plan for him to go to the Greeks, for him to go to the Gentiles, he went by the Greek, his Greek name, Paul. You see, he embraced this new name according, and it enabled him. I'm Paul, right? I'm not just Saul of Tarsus, but I'm Paul because I'm, I'm now going to be known to the Greeks, not just to the Jews. Whenever he heard Paul, he heard the notes and the purpose written in his book that God wrote before he was even formed. You see, there's power in a name. When he heard, hey, Paul, Paul, Apostle Paul, he went, ah, the preacher, preacher to the Gentiles. That's what was written in his book. I remember the day I was baptized, Pastor John Smith. I was 16 years old. I went down. It's my second week, right? It's my second week in Christian Outreach Center. It's my second week in INC. I'd come over from uh, the Anglican church and this, this Christian Outreach Center church, this Pentecostal stuff, this charisma, this work, it was awesome. I loved it. <clears throat> and the second week, the first week I went, I heard about baptisms taking place and I hadn't been baptized. I'd been born again four years earlier, but no one had talked to me about baptism. Hallelujah. I heard, I mean, you must be baptized. I went, oh, this came alive. And so I came the next day and I got baptized and to my shock and my horror, they lifted up the stage and underneath the stage was a baptismal pool. Wow, there it was right for me. I remember going down into that water, coming out of that water, washed, cleaned, <laughs> new man. And there were words. There was a view that came to my ears. Pastor John Smith began to prophesy. He said to me, God sees you. He's made you. He's created you. He's formed and fashioned you in your mother's womb, a preacher to the nations of the world, a preacher of the gospel to the nations of the world. You're going to play hot scotch on the nations of the world preaching the gospel. Guess what? The moment I accepted that name, the moment I heard that name, accepted it and embraced it, that, that name had a purpose. That name had a had plan. It had frame. It had a view. God's view of me prescribed in it. And then all of a sudden, there are dozens of nations that I've played hot scotch across preaching the gospel on. And without hearing that name, you're a preacher to the nations. You're going to be a preacher to the nations. I wonder whether I would have put my foot on any nations preaching hallelujah there's power in a name there's power in a view how god views you what he speaks about you grab a hold of those notes what he's got destined for you what he's got planned for you take a hold of that book and say oh my god reveal to me the secrets reveal reveal to me the purpose and the plan speak over me what's your view of me today god because i want to live up to that i want to live into that i want to live out of that hallelujah Every time I hear the name preacher of the gospel, I think about me. I think that's how God sees me. And you're listening to me this morning based on a name spoken over me, a view. The view of God spoken over me. 16-year-old boy who had no clue about anything. 31 years later. I'm living up to the name. <laughs> I'm living in the name. Hallelujah. And the power and the pressure is all on the name giver. It's all on the one who framed me. It's all on the one who spoke over me. It's all over the one, on the one who said I'm marvelous. The one who said I'm skillfully wrought. The one who said I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. All the pressures on him. All the pressures on our Father. All the pressures on our Father this morning. For this to be happening in and out of my life, all I've done is accept it and embrace it. And now living in the power of it. Hallelujah. Genesis 17, you'll find Abram and Sarai have a name change. They have a name change. And the moment they accepted the name change, okay, they're aged, right? They've heard about this promise that God had them. And, and we've gone, you know, we're 13 years after Ishmael and Hagar and, and all the stuff that happened right there. Ishmael, ooh. Now, God appears to Abram and he says, you're no longer going to be known as Abram, but you're going to be known as Abraham. I see you, father of many nations. And then it says, you're not going to call Sarai, Sarai anymore. You have to call her Sarah because she is a mother of many nations. She's got to be a mom to many nations. And I can just see Abram going, uh-huh, Abraham. But listen to this. Because of his view, because he was able to receive and accept that, he then began to speak that over his wife, Sarai. When he said Sarah. So when he was saying, hey, Sarah, uh, when, when's dinner ready? He was saying, hey, mother of many nations, when's dinner ready? And he was beginning to move it. So they were able to live into it, live out of it and live up to that name. 
And we know history declares that God moved by his power according to what God saw and what God said. The moment they accepted it and the moment they embraced it, they were able to live into it, live out of it and live up to that name as a father and a mother to nations. Do you know God has spoken many things over you? But so is shame. Whose name? What are you listening to? Who's, who's, what are you embracing? What are you receiving? You see, there's a choice. Death. And life is in the power of the tongue. And we can choose how we're going to live out of it. We can choose what fruit we're going to eat. It's right there. It's life and death. And, and can I encourage you that, that you can accept that negative or you can accept that positive. It's the same thing. It's a choice that you use to accept. But I pray today the Holy Spirit isn't convicting you. I pray the Holy Spirit is moving on your heart and on your mind that you've heard marvelous like you've never heard it before. You've heard skillfully put together like you've never heard it before. He's been able to go deep down uh, beyond and inside. He's been able to lay you open by the power of his living word and speak to part of your heart that maybe you've not been able to hear him in before. You see, Abram and Sarai had to accept their new names and accepting them and embracing them, empowered them and allowed them to live into the names God had for them. And therefore, what he had written in his book started to be lived out of. You see, I have made you a father of many nations, God said to Abraham. And then Abraham said to Sarai, you are the mother of many nations. And then there's faith coupled there. There's obedience coupled there. And then God moves miraculously and become they become exactly what God said they would be. Can I encourage you this morning? You can become everything that God said you're going to be. You can become everything according to his view, everything according to his frame. It is possible because the pressure is not on you. The pressure is on God creator. Lord God Creator, Father, Abba, Father, our Father is working it according to your view. Sorry, according to his view of you. Embrace our Father's view. You can embrace our Father's view. Abraham embraced his Father's view when he called Sarai Sarah when she was barren and old. Sarah, Sarah. You see, what are we speaking over ourselves? What are we speaking over each other? I believe there's a power, and that's what God's speaking to us about this month, to accept his view, to accept he's framed us, to accept the names he has for us. He's our father. And so if I accept that about me, I'm accepting that about you. And I can start to call some of you Abraham, father of many nations. I can begin to speak over your life, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. And as I speak it, you can live into it. As you speak it over me, as we, the church, speak and talk about each other and grab a hold of God's frame and his view for our life, and we begin to use it, we begin to embrace it, we begin to accept his word. Everything he's framed us to be, everything he's written about us to be can come to pass. You can be that father of many nations. You can be that mother of many nations, regardless of your state of fertility, regardless because there is a word spoken right back in the beginning. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And the moment Sarah embraced that name, Fruitfulness and multiplication came in accordance with God's plan right in the beginning. So we can trace it back. We can trace it back. You are very good. You've been made in his image. You're an image bearer. You are very good. You've been redeemed by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. You've been purchased back to be all that you have been called to be, that all that you've been spoken over to be. And today I pray the Holy Spirit would move on you. Touch your life and touch your heart. Frame you again. Frame your thinking. Frame your view so that we can live out of the purpose that he has for our life. You see, who said you couldn't? Who said you couldn't? Father God is not saying you couldn't. It's not his view of you. It's not his view. It's someone else's view. Our Father said you will. Whose views will you accept and embrace? Whose views will you accept and embrace today? See, our Father, he's got some notes written about you. And I pray today that you would take a hold of that book, that you would hold up his notes about you. You would hold up his word about you. You'd accept them. You'd embrace them. 
and then allow him to bring the life out of you, to bring the multiplication and the purpose out of you that he spoke over you right in the beginning. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you today that everything that has been spoken over our lives, every view that's not come from you right now in the name of Jesus, I pray you would expose it, that we would reject it. Lord God, I think that you're not saying we can't. You're not saying we couldn't. That's not from you. You're saying that we are marvelous, that we are a marvelous work. You're saying that there is skill in us. You're saying that we've been fearfully and wonderfully put together, that your eyes are always on us. We are in your view all the time. And you are worried, you are caring about, you're concerned about our view of you and our view of ourselves. So today, Holy Spirit, I pray that your frame and your view and your notes written about us come into view. We accept them and embrace them. Father God, I'm just going to read a couple. I'm just going to read a couple right now, just with your eyes closed, heads bowed. I just want you to listen. I just want you to listen to the Father's view of you. I just want you to listen to some of the things he has to say about you, some of the things his word has spoken over you that are no doubt written in his little book about you. It's his book. Now you're a new creature. Now you're God's child and you're born again. You are forgiven and washed in the blood. That you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. That you are delivered from the power of darkness. That you are redeemed from the curse of the law. You are blessed. You are a saint. You are holy without blame before him in love. You are elect. You are established to the end. You are victorious. You are set free. You are strong in the Lord. You are dead to sin. You are more than a conqueror. You are accepted in the beloved. You are reconciled to God. You are alive with Christ. These are all some of the things that the Father says about you. We can live up to it. We can live into it. We can live out of it when we accept it and we embrace it. Would you be blessed today? Have a fantastic Sunday. And if you struggle speaking it over you, speak it over someone else. And as you see their view, as you see the Father's view of them, you'll be able to see the Father's view of you. See, that's family, that's brother and sister, that's oneness with God, that's this, that, that, that's likeness, that's image, that, that, that how I see, that's, that's love of God and love of others. It's this, all this connected space. Accept it and embrace what he says about you. Go to work. Go to work with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, not to live up to it, but to live out of it and accept it. See the change. See the breakthrough. See the life abundant, the multiplication of his abundant life break forth in your life according to his view, according to his name that he has for you. Amen. Be blessed today.